In this video, I want to show you how to derive the so-called Poisson summation formula. In particular, if we define a function s of t, so a function of time, t is the variable that represents time. In general, it could also represent space, but let's think of time. And if we sum over n from minus infinity to plus infinity, this function here, but instead of writing t, we write the discrete time n, or if you want, we can use another another integer here. It doesn't necessarily have to be n. You can put k, for example. Then this will be equal to a similar summation from minus infinity to plus infinity of the transform, the Fourier transform of this function here that I will call uh, s hat of k like this and we have to prove that this is actually the case and in particular the function s hat is defined in terms of the frequency f so we um, consider the transform of the function s of t then we multiply it by the complex exponential e to the minus i 2 pi f t dt and we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity in general, it, it, it is also possible to define the transform, and in this case, let's call it S tilde of omega, which is the angular frequency. So, in this case, it is a similar integral, but in the complex exponential, we don't have the factor of 2 pi. So, in particular, we have minus i omega t dt, where 2 pi f is replaced by omega there. But we are going to use the definition with the, um, the frequency f, not the angular frequency omega. So this is the first part to understand. And then, basically, we have to prove this formula. And we are going to do it in the following, in the following way. So we first discretize this formula. So we replace f with k. So here we put k. And then we basically sum on each uh, uh, side. So sum over k from minus infinity to plus infinity s hat of k and then this will be integral from minus infinity to plus infinity s of t summation with k going from minus infinity to infinity plus infinity let me write it properly minus infinity here and then we have e to the minus i 2 pi k t dt, like this. And now we simply have to find another way to represent this formula. But this formula here can also be written as a summation over k from minus infinity to plus infinity of Dirac deltas t minus k, like this. And after we do that, now it becomes very simple because we can rewrite everything like this. Now we can see that S of t is multiplied by this train of impulses, so this Dirac delta. So we can rewrite this as summation. Let's put the summation outside of the integral over k from minus infinity to plus infinity. We have S of k because we can evaluate S of t at t equal to k. And then we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity delta of t minus k dt. And this will be just 1. And therefore, we are left with summation over k from minus infinity to plus infinity s of k, like this. So we have proved what we really wanted to prove. And take a look also at the fact that I'm not uh, being very rigorous here because uh, you can see that I'm switching the order between these uh, infinite summations with uh, these integrals. So one usually has to, to be careful when these kind of operations uh, are uh, performed. But it can be done, and this is the formula that we obtain, and it, it is a formula that, that uh, we will use in finding the analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function.